creating a video game. How do you do it? Where do you get started? Well, I'm going to recommend getting started with Unreal Engine for a couple different reasons, which will become pretty clear. There have been a few big games that have been released. I'm sure some people are familiar with uh, Fortnite. But there's also other games like Ark and Conan and a few others that have been produced that have done pretty well that have been created with Unreal Engine. So getting started, of course, the first thing you need to uh, do is if you don't already have a Epic game or Epic Games account, go ahead and create one, and you know, you'll have the home store library friends Unreal Engine. Make sure you go to Unreal Engine and select library, and you may or may not have anything here, and you definitely won't have any projects here. Um, I have a few. Um, I have a few too many. Um, I also have assets, which we'll be covering here shortly as well. So all of these are assets that I have, and this is not all of them. I have others that are on my hard drive, over several hard drives. Um, to get started, if you don't see anything here but you see something grayed out, uh, I'm going to be using 4.23.1 because it's stable. Um, 4.24 is available. This is the preview version of the latest beta version. And if you want to go ahead and get started, and if you want to follow along with 4.23.1 like I am, and you see the grayed out section here, you can click on the arrow and select the version that you want to get, and it will be 4.23.1. So just select that and then install. Once you've gotten to that point, no, I'm not going to wait because it's going to take you a little bit, then go ahead and hit launch. Now, what we're going to do to get started with is we're going to create our first project, and we're going to go into that project, and then I'm going to cover a few of the, the basic components to look at and how to navigate. It may seem complicated at first, but trust me, it's really easy to get going with. Um, yes, I did hit the launch button. It does take a couple seconds to get going. It'll take a little bit longer the first time you, you do it because it has to load a few other things. Um, there will be things you'll need to install later on that if you're going to package up your project to share with friends, then you're going to need to have um, other things installed. And, you know, it's just uh, like .NET Framework and uh, a Visual Basic, a Visual Studios. And everything, everything that I'm going to cover in this series is going to be free. Nothing will cost you a penny. You don't have to spend a dime and you can create your first game, second game, any game, and you don't have to pay a penny. And there will be a lot of things that you can get for free that will make life a lot easier. So we're at 50%. It'll, like I said, it'll take a couple moments to uh, get going the first time. And I'm doing this in real time as a stream because you can see the real time of what's going on. Plus, another reason why I like to do these via stream is so that um, if somebody pops in and has a question, then you're more than welcome to ask as I'm streaming. That's the whole point of it. So we're going to go to New Project. Again, you won't have anything here in Projects for your, at, at first. So I'm going to go to New Projects, and you can go to Blank, but you don't really have anything to work with. But they've taken the time to give you the template for a first person, which is pretty good and it gives you a weapon that you can shoot and you can knock these blocks around it's not a bad way to get started uh, flying you get an example map and you can fly around in it um, handheld augmented reality in display puzzle rolling side scroller 2d side scroller third person which is the one that we're going to use top down twin stick shooter vehicle virtual reality and a vehicle advanced but we're gonna go ahead and go with third person it's the most common one hey what's going on buddy um, 
It's creating a, a, a new series that is targeted towards people who have no experience whatsoever with Unreal Engine 4 and trying to create that first game. We're going to make sure this is set for desktop and console. However, you can develop for mobile and tablet. But for right now, let's get started with desktop and console. And with starter content, we're going to go ahead and leave that in there. And it's going to give us a bunch of things that we can use to, to get started with. And we're going to leave it on maximum quality. Um, leave it in the default location. It should be in my documents and so forth. You should see basically the same thing, but your computer name will be different naturally. And I'm going to give this a name, a underscore, no spaces. You have to use underscores for a space. First underscore project. And I'm going to go ahead and create project. Now you can add these other elements in later if you so choose to whenever you're creating that first project. So yeah, the reason why I'm starting off a new series is I've got some more people who are interested in getting started and they'll have zero experience whatsoever. And this is going to be a, a series I'm going to follow through with and we'll start getting more in tune with scheduled live streams of, hey, I'm going to be streaming at this time, come on in, join, ask questions and do things. Right now, with this whole COVID-19 thing that's got everybody just about locked at home, you got no excuse but to sit around and learn instead of doing like I've done for the last two weeks and just keep my nose in, in a video game. I won't mention any, any names of the game, Division 2, um, uh, that's been consuming my time. But I have met some really cool people. Uh, since I've been active with the game. So, the project. Once it first pops up, um, come on, you can do it. I have faith in you. There we go. Um, you probably won't have this. I have a bunch of other plugins and stuff like that that are activated. All right, so this is the editor. And this is your main view screen showing the, the map itself to navigate around that, which you're going to be doing quite a bit of for placing items in your map. You can right click and then move your mouse around so that um, you can pan around. And while you're doing that, you can also use your WASD keys to float around. But you're going to be holding the right mouse button to be able to do that. If you get too far away, and like, oh no, way too far away, how am I going to get back to it? Well, I know that um, right now I have the, the player and a player start, so it's network player start, I can hit the F key on my keyboard and it will resume focus. So the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy right here and I'm going to hit the delete key because we don't need him. This spinny thing here, we don't need that. I'm going to click on it and hit delete. We don't need third person down here. Um, I can click on it, hit delete. This thing right here, sphere reflection capture for getting started yeah you know what we're not even going to bother modifying this map we're just going to go ahead and create a new map so creating that first new map and that's what we're going to go ahead and do so we can use this as a test map um, first off I want to click right here and it's going to give me this window it's going to show me the folders that I have to work with and this is going to be the contents of that folder so mannequin, starter content, third person, third person BP. We're going to make new ones as we go. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to click on content and an empty space over here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this maps. And I'm going to hit enter while I have it highlighted. And that way we can see it up top. There's a couple things we want to do in first off click on edit and editor preferences now this is my personal preference and I'll show you why I like it we're gonna go to the asset editor open location click the drop down and select main window and then scrolling down over here loading and saving we're going to disable autosave we're gonna uncheck that box because I don't want you to rely on autosave to save you from screwing up um, 
you are the master of your own save and if you're working on something hit that save button it's free it doesn't cost you anything save all bam do it um, I'm gonna go ahead and like I said make this new map and I'm gonna hit file I'm gonna go to the first option of new level and we're gonna choose default and I'm not saving the changes I did to this map so don't save so this is our first map we're gonna use this as our test map to work with and on the first things I'm gonna do here is again right click so that I can pan around and WASD so I can float around with the camera just to clean things up I'm gonna click on this guy hold down the control key and left click on these other things that are floating up in the air and I've got these arrows here I'm gonna take the blue arrow and I'm gonna shove them underneath the ground I don't want to see them it's not gonna affect anything so we just do that I'm gonna click on the sphere reflection capture we don't need it for right now I'm gonna hit delete after I select it and we're done now the world outliner for some reason if you don't see the world outliner you should but if you don't you can come over here to window and make sure you have a check next to world outliner right here and you'll have this learn good habits as you're going one of the first things I'm gonna suggest is somewhere in a clear spot right here or on top up here we can click on untitled right click and create new folder and I'm gonna call this map stuff and then what I can do is I can left click here then I'm gonna shift left click here and then I can left click and drag everything into that folder and then I can minimize that folder it cleans up this right here and getting organized early by creating folders for everything is going to help you get organized and make it a lot easier to work with okay so if we were to just hit play right now you can see well first off I have a mouse cursor here if you do have the mouse cursor just left click anywhere on the screen and you can move your mouse around pan around your character WASD will actually let you move around you hit escape to stop play mode I'm gonna to go to world settings and you can see game mode override under game mode I'm gonna check this box right here and go down to third person game mode and if you see selected game M you could actually slide that over if you want to and this is your selected game mode and your options for it right now we have default pawn class and everything that is going to be operational for here So now again I have a mouse cursor I don't like that I'll show you how to fix that if you have that problem and there we go so next thing let's go ahead and save save all save selected select your map folder and we're gonna call this our test map and then hit enter bam and then I'm gonna hit save all one more time okay this save all feature you do something on your map hit save all do something on your map hit save all get in the habit of constantly hitting that save button that way if something happens the game you know, your editor crashes you lose internet you lose power um, your computer just does whatever and yeah whatever you hit save all on is what you can come back to if you do work for two three hours and your computer crashes and you just lost everything so as well as being organized of creating folders for your stuff in your map get in the habit of hitting that save button and again it's a good habit and it will protect you in case something does happen so I'm going to actually show you one of my favorite things and it's a BSP geometry uh, I'm gonna select the map floor that's right here and I'm gonna hit delete we're gonna get rid of our floor now if you were to try to play now you're just gonna fall through the world and you don't want that so let's actually create a floor while we're talking about this stuff here recently placed would be things that well you've recently used in your map basic is gonna be empty actor empty character empty pawn point light and just basic things and we'll cover those more as we use them and 
we don't have a player start, do we? Yes, we do. Hit F, and we can focus back on that item and go right back to it. So the next thing, lights. These are lights you can place into your map, and we'll cover them a little bit at a time. Cinematic. A lot of people use uh, Unreal Engine 4 for creating cinematics in short films and all kinds of stuff. Visual effects. Adding in post-processing, which means like um, changing the volume of the light to have different shaders and so forth. Um, exponential fog, atmospheric fog. Um, we'll worry about those later. Um, go to geometry. And this is what we're going to work with here first. And we have box, cone, cylinder, curved stairs, and we'll look at those more later, but we just want to create a floor. Um, you also have volumes, something you're going to be worried about later on for sure. Blocking volumes is something you can use that will help prevent a player from getting somewhere or falling off their, their, your map, especially since it's small. Another popular one that you're going to be using in if you have bots or AI character would be the nav mesh bounds which is going to be the usable area that they have to work with. And there's lots of little tricks you can do with that as well. So let's go back to the geometry and we're going to grab a box geometry. Now if I do this without a texture or a material applied to it then it's just going to have this grid material. That's no problem. For our floor we don't really want it. I'm going to go back to my details panel and I'm going to select this for this being your transform so we'll cover this area right here. Transform is going to be your location, your rotation, and your scale. Where it is in the world, how it's turned and oriented, and how big or small it is scale-wise. I want this to be in the center so I'm going to hit 0 then tab, 0 and then tab, and then I'm going to actually do one thing I'm going to do negative 5 because I'm going to resize this. When you're using BSP geometry, and I'll definitely cover this more uh, later on, we're not going to use anything up here. We're going to manually enter how big we want this to be. And I want this to be 5,000 units. And I'm going to hit tab. 5,000. And I want 5. And for some reason, it lost my negative 5. So this is actually creating the dimensions in the X, Y, and Z. And if you don't know which is which, in the lower left-hand corner, you have your X, Y, and Z right here. So I know that if I rotate it around, Y is always going to be this way, X is always going to be this way, and Z is going to be up and down. If you have used other programs and, well, but, but Z is supposed to, no, this is how it is in Unreal Engine 4, so just kind of roll with it. So we get play now, we actually have a floor to walk on, and we can do that. We can walk around on it. We have nothing here. The main reason why I say don't put a material down on your test map is because if you were to look really closely at your map, you have these big gray squares and dark gray and light gray squares. And each one of these is going to be 100 units by 100 units. And then the smaller squares on the inside are... 10 units by 10 units. So if you're trying to create something that you want to be a specific size or you know that you're walking this way and you want a hallway so you want a perfect gap of 300 wide so you know that by placing it in a certain location you can actually visually have a representation of, of where you're placing it. But we'll worry about placing things on the map in another video. We just want to get started and understand the, the basics of Unreal Engine 4 and creating that first game. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save All because that's what you should be doing. And if you click on Content again, then you can see all these different folders here are going to be here as well. I'm going to create another new folder. And to explain why, we'll do it a little bit of time here. So I'm going to right click, select new folder. I'm going to call this character. Okay, and then hit enter and I can go into it. Now, reason why I'm doing this is 
going to be so that I can create my own custom character and be able to make changes and modifications to my custom character. Worst case scenario, if I ever screw it up, I still have my original character, which will be the third person uh, player. So I'm going to go ahead and create new folders inside of this character folder. And the first one is going to be called Blueprints. I'm going to create another one. And I'm going to call this Animations because at some point we may want to retarget animations and add new stuff. And again, let's just get started and get organized to get going here. I'm going to do another one and we're going to call this Mesh. And we'll do another new folder. We're going to call Material Materials. And if we want, we can also do another one here called Textures. Again, each one will be explained as we need them. And today's video is brought to you by Coffee. I don't have a sponsor, so it's Coffee. It's whatever brand. I'm not even going to mention the brand because they're not paying me and they're not putting uh, coffee in my, my cup. So, ah, brain food. Okay. So we're going to go to third person BP and let's expand this folder and in the blueprints folder we have one called third person character. Okay, let's make sure our characters folder is expanded so we can see all of our new blue, uh, new folders here. I'm going to let's click on third person character. I'm going to drag it over to blueprints. I'm going to let go and select copy here. That is going to give me a copy of that here. <laughs> Okay, but I'm going to select it and I'm going to hit the F2 key and I'm going to call this player underscore base. It's what I call all my characters. I don't know why, but that's just what I do. So this is going to be our new character and we need to now go to our world settings over here for our map and change our default pawn class it is going to now be our player underscore base. So now every time we play, we're using our new character. So Let's explore what is a blueprint. Well, I'm going to double click on it and it's going to open up up here in the main tab. And that's because when we did the editor preferences and selected asset editor open location main window so that it will actually open up on here and we can have multiple tabs open and you will sometimes have two, three, four, or five tabs open at one time of different blueprints. Now, if you were to scroll in, a blueprint is made up of nodes that you can connect together with lines to create different functions and different functionality. And this particular one, as I scroll in, the input access turn, yeah, add controller, y'all, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And you've got multiple different things here. Now, it's going to be confusing at first. Don't worry about it. In fact, you don't need to do anything with any of these. In fact, I know that I'm not going to be doing anything with VR, so I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag a uh, selection box over all of the VR stuff and I'm going to hit delete. I don't need it. I'm not going to use it. Gamepad input, if you're going to use it, great. I'm not, but if you want to move it, you can actually grab from the top and move it around. Since I have it selected this way, um, if I hit delete now, it's going to delete just the comment box around it. I don't need nor want the input access turn rate and blah 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 for control, you know, gamepad. Movement input I want to keep. Mouse input, jump I want to keep. I'm not using a laptop. Um, you don't have to delete these. I'm doing it just because I want to. I don't use them, so I'm not going to keep them. But getting organized and the whole thing, compile. Hit that compile button and hit save button. Anytime you're doing anything major in your blueprint that you want it to commit, hit compile, hit save. Boom, done, taken care of. Okay. Those are your, your save functions. Just get in the habit of doing both of them. Compile, save, compile, save. Okay. Getting organized in your blueprints. This is going to be your main component box. We'll cover more of that later. This is going to be your other. Well, the most important one to cover for right now is variables 
and variables is basically well it's something you're going to use quite a bit of it's going to help you build conditions for things to actually work so if you want your character to jump um, now this is using input action jump I'll cover that in just a second and it's jump stop jumping when you press the button it starts jumping when you release it no longer does it but if you were to actually hit, hit play and jump well it's only going to do a certain and this is what we call animations and that's going to be handled by an animation blueprint again something to cover later um, input action means that this is a stored input to be reused later on I personally don't use them and I'll show an alternative to doing it this way but to find out your input action or if you want to assign key bindings to this you can go to edit project settings and it will pop up and then if you go to input all the way down here you have in the binding section action mappings jump and if you expand the arrows spacebar gamepad face button bottom so if you're trying to assign different key bindings like for jump we can use any of these inputs to make our character jump we're not going to do any drastic changes to this right here but even though I don't need gamepad and motion controller and all that stuff I'm not going to be using them um, I can actually if I want to just hit the X at the end here and get rid of them uh, reset VR I'm not going to be using it at all so I can delete that axis mapping I really wouldn't mess with right now but the only action mapping that we have is this we can do okay if I want to shift spacebar I can just click that button there but I don't like using these because what if I want to now use the spacebar for another command or do something else with spacebar a lot of times I'm going to use like the E key to open a door or F key to open a door or to do an action um, but I want it to be able to do different things at different times so to prevent from having to use an input action jump in this case we've created one it's an input action and the action is called jump honestly to create a new node just find the empty spot right click and now this is all your different nodes you can do if you don't know what you're looking for but you have a general idea then you can start typing it in and what I want to do is get a keyboard um, key press of spacebar so I will type in keyboard space bar and there it is right here and we get the same basic thing pressed and released well if I want to get rid of that I can grab that or I can just select it hit delete and I can move my spacebar up here and on pressed we jump and when we release we're not jumping anymore that's how you can actually assign an individual key and this is going to be very useful later on and I'll explain it more as we go again compile save compile and save often so that's just an example of being able to bind a key so let's actually do that let's actually bind a key and let's test for sure well after we get rid of this mouse cursor so now if I press in here so I can start moving my character around if I hit the space bar we still jump even though we got rid of that other one okay so to get rid of that we're going to use one of two very commonly used ones but the very best of the two we're going to right click and event begin play and what this is is a node that runs as soon as this player becomes a thing when we begin to exist in the world compile save we want events to happen from here this is your executable pin and we're going to connect things here to create a series of events for it to actually work so to get started with I'm going to do something and I'll cover more how and why it works later but I just want to go ahead and get rid of that mouse cursor so 
I am going to set input to game mode only or game only because I want only the game mode to be there. Player controller reference, get player controller, and I'm just going to move that around. And then from here, I can drag from this blue pen and set show mouse cursor and leave this box unchecked and that is going to hide my mouse cursor. So now if we hit play no more mouse cursor. I can go right in and start controlling my character. Now this is only a problem in the editor and if you were to build this game and package it up it's not going to be a thing. But for me it's just a pain in the butt and I just do that to take care of that problem. All right, so again, when we begin to play, we're going to run this event. Now, we can do a couple different things here with this, so we can hide these and make it more streamlined and clean up our blueprint. And this is a blueprint, by the way. You're going to be creating blueprints for all manner of things. Now, I can select these three items right here, and I can right-click on them and I have the option to collapse nodes, collapse to function, collapse to macro, and I'm going to choose collapse to function. And it packaged it up into this neat little box there and it's already highlighted ready for you to enter a name. I'm just going to call this remove cursor and hit enter. And now it's collapsed and it only takes up this little tiny bit of room. If I want to see what's in there, I can double click on it and see the internal contents of this. And I can make changes to it if I need to or whatever. And it just works. So we hit compile, save. Well, I do appreciate it. Yep. Um, all these um, are automatically saved um, on my streams, so you can watch them later. Um, and if you have questions, come by the Discord and, and ask me whatever. You know, if I can't help, then I'll try to get you in the right locations. All right, so that's that. Like I said, you can just double click on it, and it opens a new tab here. If you don't need to see that, you can close that. The other tab you have open here, construction script, again, something we'll worry about later, and viewport. We can actually see our character. We're going to make changes to this little capsule that's surrounding our player later, but for now, we know that this is a thing, and it works. We can go into our map and play and walk around and jump, and that's all we can do. To get started with, let's press the F key, and when I press the F key, I want to do something. I want to, for right now, know that I'm doing something. So, in my player, I am going to, first off, select these things right here. And I'm just going to move them out of the way, just so I have a clean area to work with. And we'll do some other tricks, like um, changing the color of this and so forth. But one thing at a time. So we find a clear space, zoom in, and if I want something to happen when I press a key, then I need to assign it a key press. So I type in keyboard, F is the one that I want. Uh, maybe I want it to be the, the E key or whatever. Well, with it selected, you can come back over here and select your key input key and change it to whatever. Keyboard, gamepad, Motion, mouse, touch, gesture, PS4, Steam, Xbox, Android. Yes, you can make your games compatible with all these different uh, formats. So, one step at a time. So now, we press keyboard F. We want to do something. We can compile and save. It's not going to do anything now because there's nothing attached here. And nothing attached here. So, let's drag off from here and we want to print text and then I'm gonna hit enter because it's already highlighted there 
and whenever I hit the F key, I want to, well, it's going to say hello. So hit compile, save, hit our test map so we can see and run around. Now, if I hit the F key, you can't see right now because it's shift F1, blah, 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 blah. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, it says hello. Well, it lasts for a couple seconds and it goes away. Escape. If you want to change how what it says, um, this is my first keyboard action. Well, you can click on the arrow here, and we don't want to print to log. We don't need to print a log. We don't need a log file to tell us something that we're never even going to look at the log file probably. So. Um, text color. You can change the color to whatever you want. You can drag it around and pick a color to whatever you want. Some psychedelic thing. Or you can say, okay, I want it to be red. So one, then I hit tab, no green and no blue. And I've just created a red color. And I hit okay. And now it's going to be red. And duration, I can say, well, I want it to last for five seconds. So we hit Compost, or Compile and Save. I'm going to call it Compost quite a bit, just to be a knucklehead. So now we hit Play. We walk around, hit the F key. Hello, this is my first keyboard action. So we can see that we're actually doing something when we're pressing the F key. It'll do something. Hit Spacebar, it's going to jump. That's a hard-coded thing. But now we're doing that. We want to do something cooler than that, right? Okay, while we're looking here, we have what's called the starter content. And it's just that. It's content you can use when you first start off with is samples of things, audio files, um, blueprints, pre-made things, maps, meh, materials, lots of cool materials, like grass, moss, brick, all kind of cool stuff. And remember I was saying about the um, material? If I select a material, like tile checker ceramic and now that I have material selected and I drag in a BSP geometry I don't know if you can see but little orange box or just dark red whatever and I can drop this into the, my world and it's going to have that material applied to all surfaces go to my details panel and I can select zero zero and zero but we're going to have our character inside there and it's going to be bad. So I'm going to select my player start. And I'm just going to slide this guy back. Now as I'm moving him left and right with the yellow, which is actually the red arrow, it's going to turn yellow so that it knows that I have that selected. If you watch right here under your location, you can see numbers changing. I'm going to drag that over. I'm not going to look on the map. I'm looking into where I can see 1,000 and 0 and 112. We're going to leave that number alone. That's your height because we need a certain height for our character so that for some unknown reason it it's not on the floor where his feet should be. It's where his belly button is or in the center of the character. But by putting this in at 0, 0, 0 location, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this one. And... I am going to, oh, sorry, wrong key, um, I'm going to delete it, and with no material selected, I'm going to drag the box back in here. Now, I'm going to change it to 0 and 0, but I'm going to leave it at 100, because the pivot point where these arrows are is going to be in the dead center middle of that box, and the middle is going to be 100 units high because look our default material is going to have this these alternating dark and light squares and each of the big squares is 100 by 100 and in this case since it's three dimensional it's 100 by 100 by 100 technically uh, and the little squares are 10 by 10 so we know that this is going to be 200 and 200 and 200 and those numbers are right here under your brush settings and with that the center of this is going to be at 100 so if 
we want to change this number to 300 in our Z, it's going to make it taller. But it's sticking into the ground. So as a rule of thumb, I want to take half of the Z height and now input that there. Half of 300 is 150. So there, now it is sitting perfectly on the ground. And if I want to change it, well, I don't want it to be 200. I want it to be 100. Um, hmm, I need to change to half of that, which would be 50. And now it's sitting on the ground. And if I wanted to do 100 by 100, we have a Minecraft block. <laughs> we just have a regular block that we can put in the world. It has collision on its own. Uh, we can step on it, jump over it, interact with it however we need to. We can't move it because it's solid and fixed. There is ways of making it to where we can run into it and knock it around, or shoot it, or throw it, or what have you. Um, with BSP Geometries, as you can see, we created this one, and let's call that one Floor. And I want to put that in my Map Stuff folder, and then minimize it. So now everything we've just created is here. So we can easily just select that Box Brush 2, and we can call it whatever we want to if we need to. To edit it, instead of clicking on it here, click on it here instead. And that's going to give you the same window. If you click on it here, it's going to be the same, but it's going to have different options. And we don't want to mess with those right now, so just click off of it in here, and then click on it that way, and we can edit the normalized settings. So we can do 200 by 200 by... Let's go with 400. We'll change this to 200 so that it puts it flat back on the ground. Look at it. Yay, and there's much rejoicing. So I'm going to click on it again, and I'm actually going to change it. And I'm going to show you one little trick here. Do it 400 by 400 by 400. And now we have this really big, huge box. Well, let's actually make it even bigger. Why not? 400, um, let's change it to 3. No, we'll leave it at 400, sorry. But let's change the X. X is going to be forward and backwards as we're looking at it here. So it's going to be this way. I'm going to change that to 500. And the Y, which is going to be in this direction, I'm going to change that to 1,000. Bam! Come to think of it, I think I, I do like it at, at 300. So I'm going to click on it on 300 high and change that again to 150. So we can make this into our house, but we can't get in there. There's no way to get inside our house. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to select it and I can select hollow. And it gives us a wall thickness of 10. Well, we have an interior, but we have no way of getting in here. So it's hollow. We could actually go in there if we had a door to get in. So to create a door, and this could be a neat little trick, and we'll cover more of BSP geometries in another video. Just, just kind of give you an idea of some of the cool things you can do. Um, I'm going to create another box geometry. I'm going to drag it into the map. And we know that our wall thickness is 10 in this direction, which is our X, we can see by looking down here. So I'm actually going to change my X to 12. We're going to make a doorway. But this is a solid object. How are you going to make a doorway out of a solid object? Just relax. We'll get there. Change the Y dimensions. And why not? Let's change it to 150. We'll leave it at 200. But we're going to raise the height to 110. And we're going to move that to where it just intersects into the wall. And we can see it on the inside and outside. Now, it's moving by 10 units. How are we going to get in between there? 
Well, we can actually change this and manually enter a number, in this case negative 245, and it's going to stick through both sides of the wall. And I can change additive type to subtractive. And it chops a hole in our wall, and yay, we can walk into our house. Kind of boring without any textures or materials or whatever. Understandable. So we can go back to our materials folder in the starter content. We want that ceramic tile floor. I'm going to select it, click on the face of the floor, and click this arrow. And now we have floor tiles. And if we want to have something for our ceiling, uh, why not let's go with concrete poured. We we'll just select the face and like that. I want to change the walls. Now I can left click and then I can control left click. And you see how they turn like a, a shade of orange. And now I can actually apply. Oh, why not? Let's do pine floor. Now it doesn't affect the outside. If you want to affect everything, it's a whole different story. But you can apply the materials directly to the outside. Okay, well, what if I want the outside to be different? Well, I can left click on it and select it. Navigate around. Control left click on the faces. And let's make it brick. Why not? So we can apply multiple materials to uh, our materials or our actual objects here. And let's put concrete tiles, why not? What we're going to have, though, is this is going to be a problem. We can try to click, uh, and click on each of these um, faces of the interior. And oops, I missed. Eh, it's a pain in the butt. So if I go to my box brush 2, which is the one that, um, sorry, our box brush, it got renamed automatically, and select that. Well. If I select one face, go to Geometry, select all adjacent surfaces, and now select my brick clay, and now it will apply that to there. But you'll notice that, um, and I'm not going to get into too much depth on this for right now, I can select this. Well, it's oriented the wrong way, so... I can actually rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, that's good. And then we have left and right arrows. We can actually make it go left and right. And we can realign our materials. Oh, we went too far, so we click the arrow, click that again, and now we can line up our materials so that they actually look correct. And here, I want to go up and down. So I can just do that. Oh, went too far. There. So you can line up your materials this way. Like I said, we're not going to get too carried away in all this right now because there's so many different things you can do with BSP geometries that you'd end up getting your brain rooted right now. So just, if you want to, do that. Now, as most people know, first off, save all. Save selected. We know that this is going to be our house. And this is going to be our door. We're going to want to do a lot more than just create a box house. And yeah. Again, you got to learn to watch. Uh, crawl before you can walk. you got to learn to walk before you can run, and you know the whole thing on that. So all we can do right now is walk around and jump up and down. It is not multiplayer. If you're interested in multiplayer, um, I, I sell a template which allows you to use Steam architecture to create a multiplayer game that you can have your friends easily find your game and join you so you can play together. Instead of just playing with yourself, you know. But we're not going to go there. But 
that's the simple basics of creating your first map. Feel free to do anything you want with these um, geometries. Uh, get stairs. Want to create stairs? No problem. Drag it into the map. Well, they don't go all the way up. Ooh, they already have materials on there. I don't want that material. Well, it's just as easy to go ahead and unselect it. And let's have chrome stairs. And drag it back in here. But I want it to go all the way up there. Well, you can use these right here, number of steps. You can see you get a double arrow. You left click and drag and select it that way. Well, I've got too many. I can also just left click here and just say I want 15. And then use your arrow here to position it so it's close to your wall. So now we hit play. We have a set of stairs that we can walk up and down. Oop, it's not lined up correctly. So I'll select it and I will move it over. So have fun placing things in your map. Walk around. Um, say, okay, you've done all this. What if you want to do uh, a, a missile? Grab a cylinder. Well, that doesn't look like it. It looks like an octagon. Oh, I didn't really want it to be that. So let's go with basic floor. Just left click on that. Create your cylinder. Well, you can change the number of sides. And let's go with 20. Add more if you want. Um, your Z is going to be your height. So I want it to be 500, which means this, the Z height, needs to be half of that, which is 250. And I don't want it to be that big around, so I can do my outer radius of 40. And then for now, I'm going to go to my transform of 0, 0, and we're at 250 reason why I put it there, and I'm going to move it here in just a second, is I want to put a cone on my rocket. So I'm going to select the basic wall, I'm going to grab a cone, drag it in here. Oh, I didn't want it there, I wanted to actually be on top of, I hit the delete key by the way, on top of there. So now I can do 0 and 0, it's going to line it up perfectly, but remember we had 20 sides, and we had an outer radius of 40, but Z height, ooh, that's too tall. Let's make it um, 100. And now I can click that and my cylinder brush together, control left click, and I can move it over here. So now we have a rocket. We can position it wherever we want to in the map. Yeah, it doesn't move. We can make it move, but we had to get started somewhere. You can actually make a, a rocket or a missile or what have you. Nice reflective properties on the, uh, the stairs there. And what if you want to make a walkway? Okay. Or you want to make a sphere or whatever. I can grab another box right here, drag that in here, change the dimensions to say, 10 high, and we want to make it. Now you could do this. But I'm not, I don't want you to. Not on a, not on a geometry. So we're going to make it. We want it to go this way. So we look at X. Let's go 600 in the X. We're fine with uh, 200 in the Y. We need to move it down. Now, if you need to. I don't want it's not snapping directly onto the uh, the roof. There's a gap there. You can change your snapping. Let's talk about these really quickly. And then this is for up, down, left, right. This is for rotation. So if you want to rotate it, you can rotate it around. Oop, I didn't mean to rotate it there. Control Z will undo it. Well, you can rotate it this way. Control Z, rotate it this way if you want to make a ramp, no problem. Control Z resets it. This is for scaling. Don't do this for BSP geometries because it stretches the material and it won't look right. You can do it on other things or if you have a dynamic material, something for a different time, just don't use this, this tool for BSP geometries. Okay. You can manually select the location again. And if you can't get the height exactly where you want it, 
we go into the next things here. I never use this, but um, enables or disables snapping the grid. This is going to, if you click that and you're on your moving here, you can manually move it based on your mouse position. But it's not going to be always precise. I'm going to re-enable that, but you have the number of units that it will move. I can change that to 5, I can change it to 1. Now if I move it down one time, uh, this is another in, um, an intro series for a couple of friends that are, are getting started again. They're not going to be able to watch the video now, but they'll be watching it later. <clears throat> Alright, so... <coughs> Excuse me. And we can take that and move it over here if we want to. Again, just showing the basics of placement of things like this. So now you can walk on it. If you go underneath there, you can jump and hit your head on it. Now again, looking at the starter content. Okay, You're going to have, under architecture, you're going to have different pieces like the floor. Just drag it, drop it in here, and it's good. Pillar, drag that in here. Uh, circle platform. Wall. 400 by 200, and the numbers here, 400 is going to be, well, since we don't have materials on the floor, 400 units this way and 200 units wide. You also have 300 and 400 and 500 by 500. The most common one that I'm going to use out of these is going to be this guy, 400 by 300, because 300 high this is typically how high I have my my single floor for interiors and things like that. And because also you have, a, a, I'm sorry, the 400 by 400 is the one that's more common here. Um, but if you do this, you've got a window frame and door frame that you can use along with it. And you can just drag these into your, your map you can position them with your arrow keys or manually here you can rotate them position them however you want to because this floor piece right here was 400 by 400 then these will fit around the outside edge of them platform you can make a platform that rises up and down you could do all kind of cool stuff but we'll save that for another video I'm just going to select these um, I don't need that. I don't need my missile. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and shift left click and select all of them. I don't need any of them. I'm going to get rid of them. So now if I hit play, all that's gone. I'm going to hit save all, save selected. So you have some prefab pieces you can use right here to help build like buildings or houses, things of that nature. Um, audio. Let's do something really quickly, and then we'll wrap up this video. Remember, we um, were doing the press F, and it, it said something in text. That's cool, right? Oh, it's so awesome. Can The joy is there of what all we're doing. Well, let's do something different. Let's get rid of this print text. That's just boring. Compile, save. Now, in our audio folder, we have... The ones that have purple um, bar on the bottom are the actual sound file. And then we can click on them and preview them. And then you have a cue. And a cue is a really cool way that we can actually just double click and open up. We have two different sound files here. We have a random node that we can use that whenever we activate this cue, it's going to play one or the other randomly whatever we click that so a lot of times if I want to have a random sound event happen I'm gonna put it in a queue and that way I can set it up that way again something for a different time so how do we get when we are in here playing we get the F key we want to play a sound which one do I want let's do the explosion cue so we're gonna play an explosion 
Well, again, it's simple to do. So we press the F key when we play the sound of an explosion. Okay. Um, but it's quiet. The map is silent. We have starter music. We could have music playing in our background. Hmm. We'll come back to that. But we have starter background cue. Now, a way we can cheat and add this background sound to our map. So I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to drag it right into my map. And I'm going to make sure it's dead center. Zero, zero, and zero. Bam, it's there. We hit play. I'll show you a way of changing that later so that it actually, you have more control of it and you can actually set the amount of volume level that it plays from. So at least now we have wind blowing and birds chirping. We have something going on in the background. So let's actually get back to, we press F, we want to play the sound of the explosion. So how do we do that? When we, a couple different ways, but the best way we want to do it is trigger it when we press the F key. So, what do we want to do? When we press the F key, we want to play a sound, not 2D, but play a sound at location. If I don't manually give it a location, it's not going to do anything but play it right there in the center of the map. The location is 0, 0, 0. It's going to play it right there. I want to give it a location, but first, Let's select the sound. Let's click on this box, and I'm going to select by scrolling down here and do Explosion Q. Or, if we want to do it a different way, we know that we want to use the Explosion Q. I'm going to select it here. Go back into my player underscore base, my player character, and there's a little arrow right there. I'm going to click that one in the middle, and it selects it. So let's compost and save and go back into our map. Now, if we hit the F key, it's getting louder as we get closer to the middle of the map, but we get farther away, we can't hear it anymore. We don't want it to happen there. We want it to happen at our character. So our character is made up of our mesh. This is our character. Mesh. This is our mesh, or skeletal mesh. Um, I'm going to select the mesh, and I'm going to left click on it, drag it into my scene here, and I'm going to move it around so it looks neat, but I can't just plug that into here, because this is not a location, this is my mesh. So I'll drag a little bit of room off from right here, and what do I want to do with this mesh? I want to get its location. So, okay, type in location. Huh. Viz log location, not a clue. We're not doing a visual logger. Um, so now we can scroll down and look. Get world location. That sounds about right. So we want to get the location of our player's mesh in the world. And now we can connect the yellow to the yellow. And you see we got a check mark and it connected. So now we're going to, when we press the F key, we're going to get a reference to our mesh get its world location and play a sound at that location. So let's compile and save. Hit play. Every time we hit the F key, yes there is some stereo panning, but it'll now play that sound at our location. And let's make it even more lovely. Um, if we look down here we have what's called particles. Particle effects. And the one we're going to just for giggles right now, we're going to add this one in here. If we just drag it into the map, we can see that it's, well, an explosion. We didn't get to see it because it was too far away. So we want to add that into, just like we did with the sound right here, we know that it is called P underscore explosion. It is a particle effect, a particle system. Um, it is also going to be called an emitter. So, in our chain of events that happen when we press the F key, let's go ahead and drag from here, and we want to use this emitter. What are we doing? We're spawning the emitter at a location. 
what's the location? Well, we already got a location. We can drag that yellow to that yellow. Now, scale. What if we want to make that bigger? We can change that, but let's just look at it first. But what emitter do we want? Well, we already selected it outside, so we can just hit the middle arrow here, and it sets that in there. So it's going to spawn that emitter at the location where we told it to go to. So now if we hit play, and we hit F, it's going to spawn that emitter and sound right there at our feet. What if you wanted that effect to happen? We'll cover that later on. But So, boom, we land. We get an explosion sound and, and particle effect, or emitter. So, we're starting to make things happen. And that's great. Well, like I said, if we wanted that emitter, we can change our scale. Let's do 10 by 10 by 10. So now if we hit F, that's a little bit too big. So we can go back in here, and we're just going to put it back in one by one by one, the way it was. And you can see we now have an effect. We can do something. We can play a sound, we can play a, um, an emitter at that location. And we have just spawned in something. We've done something with our world. We actually have um, sound playing in the background. We have an explosion we can play. Um, not very practical unless you did want to um, say, okay, as I'm running, I'm a giant. I jump and I land. Bam! It plays a, a particle effect and sound. What if you want to jump and it makes a boing sound? Um, you can do all kind of different things that way, but you got to learn how to start these things one step at a time. And yes, if you did a fire, this is a ongoing one, so and of course it doesn't hurt. And yeah, if you wanted to spawn this instead of the explosion, you would just have fire. So let's actually get rid of that one. So what would happen if we did that emitter? We press F. It's going to stay there because it's not attached to the player. So everywhere we did that, it's just going to spawn it. Not very practical. So we're going to leave this one back at our explosion compost save. So you kind of get the idea now of when you're triggering events. Well, what if we wanted to do some fancy things? Well, we'll do some more fancy things in another video. I want to keep these videos right at the one hour mark so people don't get extremely bored listening to my stupidity. I mean, uh, my, my voice. We could add in um, other variables like, well, I only want this to happen um, if I'm on the ground. I don't want it to happen while I'm in the air. So how do I do that? Um, right click is in air. Hmm. Yes, but not here. Um, Well, are we on ground? Is moving on ground? Well, it gets a reference to our player character, but we're not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to cover one more last thing. When we're looking at variables, we, we saw that this is a variable for our mesh, but we want to create a new variable just to show the different types here. We can click this and variable and I'm going to hit compile and save. So we have a variable. Variable has multiple different types. The variable type by default is going to be a boolean. A boolean is a true or false and these are going to be usually associated with a branch node. Um, you can right click and type in branch and insert a branch node or you can actually hold down the, the B key and left click and get one instantly. So you have a branch node and you can either left click, drag this in here 
and get a reference to it or you can set the reference value to it or you can control left click drag and drop and get a git node or alternate key left click drag it in and get a set node or since we're trying to plug this into a branch node I can left click drag it onto the red pin and there you go now a boolean variable is it's either a yes or it's a no it is a you have a checkbox here so if I compile and save um, by default I can left click here it is unchecked so it is no so basically what we're asking right here variable yes or no boolean is that yes or no it is either of the two it, it can't be anything else it's either yes or it's a no branch node means it's a question this is a question is this yes or no if that variable is we can change the name do I have coffee or am I jumping am I shooting am I passing gas whatever do I have coffee well with the branch node here and I hate when people do this crap right here so if I do it just tell me to stop being a dumbass so I'm asking a question here do I have coffee well if the answer is yes then I want to do something I want to print text of hello I have coffee but if I don't have coffee I want to do this and I could say I could change the text and say no I don't have coffee so let's assign it a key really quickly and we'll do keyboard G so when I press a G key I'm gonna ask a question do I have coffee and the answer in the real world yes I do but we have our boolean for do I have coffee is set to unchecked which is false so true and learn how to spell keep it simple so when I press the G key it's going to basically what is the state of my variable so this would be a more accurate thing variable state am I yes or no if I'm yes it's gonna print true if I'm no or unchecked I'm gonna print false so compile save go in here we press G after we let this shift F1 blah 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 let that get out of the way so false the answer is false if we change the variable state to checked hit compose or compile and save now we hit it it is true so that's all that's asking is a boolean is going to ask yes or no and then you can apply conditions with a branch node of saying if I am true or if I am checked you know perform this task if not then perform that one so that is a boolean the next one and these can be easier to explain as we go along byte well it's an 8-bit number very seldom do I use those integer it's a whole number there's no decimal point behind it so if you want this to be an integer you can and save the integer number is 0 I can change it to 100 how many bullets do I have in my magazine 100 great okay so there we there we have it um, the next one is integer 64 never used it uh, floating point number or a float is a number with a decimal point you're going to use this one quite a bit and I'm gonna go ahead and make this one as a reference to our health so I can change variable name our health is now going to be 
100. I can add that number in there. So I want this to stay, this is our, our health, our health is 100 or 100%. Okay. Other variables that you're going to use quite a bit is a name. Well, it is just that. It's you're applying a name to something, and there's certain times where you're going to want to use a name. Uh, a string is a string of numbers and letters combined together. That is not like a name or not just random text, but it's just a string, a variable string of of all of the above there. Text. It's just that. Whenever I do a print text, I can actually create a variable with the text that I want to, to say at that particular time. Easy enough. Vector. Again, when we're talking about a transform earlier, our vector is going to be our X, Y, and Z location in the world. Simple enough. Rotator is going to be the direction that we're rotated. Simple enough. Transform is going to be our vector, our rotator, and our scale, all three combined into one unit. In other words, it's going to be our our location, our rotation, and our scale, all combined into one big thing. And it, it's going to be very handy to use that later on. Trust me. So those are the main types. There's a ton more variables that you can use. Structures, which I'll definitely get into later. Um, interface, object types, enums, there's a lot of other things here that you can use for that, but we're going to leave it as that for health. We don't have a heads-up display. We can add that in later on. So when we, we start playing, we can see that, okay, if we, we have a health of 100, then, you know, if we take damage, then we want that to be reflected. For now, I'm going to get rid of our press F make explosion. I'm going to get rid of that. Compost and save. And when we did our event begin play and we created our, our custom uh, function out of that particular thing right there, we want to keep this organized. I'm going to select all the things that are combined together. I'm going to hit the C key. C is in Charlie. It's going to create a comment box. And I'm going to call this begin play. So anything that's run off of event begin play or when our, our player first becomes part of the world is going to be inside this little comment box. And you can change the size of it to add more stuff as you need to. And another really, really cool thing that I like to do with these to help stay organized, compost and save, I've got a comment color. I'm going to select this. Now, begin play is something that, hey, I'm, you know, a very important thing. I want, like, yellow for caution. So let's do red and then 0.75 and 0 for blue. And we've just created a yellow color. I'm going to drag that yellow color up here, and now I can reuse it anytime I want. Movement keys. Okay, I want movement to be blue. So let's come back over here and let's create a blue color. Let's do green and blue together. We'll have this light blue and I'm going to drag it up here. Bam. Now I can select this and use my pre-made color and OK. So now all my movement related stuff is going to be this color. So now as I am scroll out, oh, OK, movement is going to be light blue. So now I just have to look for a light blue, and there's that. When I do damage related stuff, I do it in red. Um, getting organized that way is going to help you as well. Um, all these together, I can select all of these at one time and hit C again and create a comment block around the comment block. And I can just type in movement. So now everything that is stored within here is going to be movement related. So now I can do the same thing and create a comment block around the comment block for command structure items or keystrokes or what have you. So getting organized is going to be extremely important so that when you're trying to find something in your blueprint and the more you add to your game and the more your character is going to do it's going to get really complicated when you're looking at 
so many different things in your blueprint. It'll be next to impossible for you to keep up with, well, where the hell is my event begin play? Or where's my event tick? Or my mouse input or movement input or what have you. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Pre-plan everything now, get organized as you're going, and everything will be lovely. And to go along with that proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. The 7P method, I'm going to repeat that over all, all these different videos, and that is plan ahead. Before you ever start making your first blueprint or your first part for your game, know what your game's going to be. You have this thing called Notepad on your computer, and I'm assuming you're using Windows, um, because why wouldn't you? Um, create a Notepad document, and okay, if you don't have the name of the game, just put in. Okay, let's go to here, and um, actually, I go to my desktop and create a new. You can't see it because that's on a different monitor. So let's minimize these. Create a new hello, thank you. Text document game doc, whatever. And when you go into it, it helps to be on the correct monitor. Game name. If you don't know the name, put game name. Um what is it? It's a third person shooter. Um Put the basic status of what your game is. Uh, then uh, any other data you have. Uh, I want my character to jump. Character movements. Jump. Uh, fly. Whatever you know. Put the basics in here and just whatever you know. Just. As you come up with things, just add them in here, and then come back later on and like, okay, character movements doesn't need to be here. I can copy this and paste it down here, and you can organize your your game doc as you go. But just get your data there and get your train of thought of what you want your game to do and be, and plan ahead. As you come up with a concept, uh, I'd like my character to be able to do this. Or as they're standing idle, I want them to pass gas and like, ooh, stinky, and wave their hand behind their butt. Or whatever you want to do, put those into your game doc, and then organize your game document as you see fit. Hell, you can even create a new folder, and then inside there have individual um, text documents for character movement and concepts, spitballing ideas, things of that nature. Um, proper prior planning is going to prevent your piss poor performance. Because if you just go in there, oh, I want to do this, and you start making this, and like, uh, well, how do I integrate that into the... If you have a good game doc ahead of time, that's great. But for now, who cares? Your first game is going to suck. You're not going to be proud of it. You're not going to like any of it. You're probably going to delete it. It's going to happen. So, Experiment. Get in there into your player. Follow along basically how we started and start trying things. When I press the G key, I want to jiggle my butt or how do you do that? And we'll cover more things and more functions and more actions in other videos. Animations are going to be your thing. Anytime your character does a specific action, in this case, whenever I jump, okay, he's jumping. Okay, but how is he jumping? The keyboard input is telling it to perform a certain action. In this case, it's to play an animation. Actually, it's playing three animations. They're all coordinated through an animation blueprint, which is, again, something we'll edit on later. But the actual jump itself is... You got jump. You can double-click on it. And if you open it, well, that doesn't look like what we just did. Your third person idle. That's what you're doing when you're standing still. Um, third person end, loop, start. Um, you're running, you're walking. All your animations have to be run through 
something called an animation blueprint. And I will absolutely get into animation blueprints later on because there's a lot of cool things we can do th with that as well and how we can change things and coordinate things. But that's for another video. So if I want to draw a pistol, my character has to do the movement, which is your animations. So you have to tell it to perform those animations and what to do when you complete doing the animation. Um, there's a lot involved in that, but it's a lot easier to do than what most people think. Most people don't think about it. Because what you're actually doing right now is when I jump, it's actually performing three animations. Whenever I'm moving around, well, I'm running at the same speed, but I don't have a sprint. Well, I want to add a sprint key, so if I hit shift, I want to be able to, to do that. Again, something for another video. What I'm going to do, is since we're at the hour and a half mark on this video, is I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to a halt, and in the next video, I'll pick up on and start adding some other functions like the fact that um, I want my character to have a sprint but I'm running too fast or jumping too high. We'll take a look at our character movement stuff in the basics and I'll slow our character down to where he's not running the same speed all the time and when we press the shift key we start sprinting and when we let go of the, the shift key it stops sprinting. So we can do um, change the height at which we jump and the speed at which we walk and add a sprint feature in. Simple enough. So what we'll do is in each video we'll start covering different things. This was just a big overview video of getting started, getting warmed up, and like I mentioned about the world outliner, if you don't have world settings, go to your window and select a check next to world settings so you'll have that. So this was just an overview video show you that it is not rocket science. Well, it kind of is. But um, it's not really that hard to get started. It's harder to get more complicated. So don't let things get complicated ahead of time. Your proper prior planning, your 7Ps, um, will help prevent you from getting just totally carried away. And I'm going to be focused on this, and for the first week of this series is going to be plenty of videos, plenty of streams, and anytime you see me streaming on this topic, come in, ask questions, and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. If not, I'll tell you to get with me on Discord, and I will get you links to the appropriate locations for you to be able to find it. So, I hope this was helpful, and shows that um, it's really not rocket science. So if you want to get into multiplayer stuff, first learn how to do single player stuff. Because before you start down the the path of the dark arts of multiplayer, you kind of need to have a grasp of how to make your character do certain things to begin with, and then start learning of the other conditions and so forth. So I'm going to take a break for a little bit, since it is lunchtime, and I am going to probably grill some, some dogs take a break for a little bit and then I'll come back and in the next video I will show how to get our character to walk slower, sprint, and change our jumps if we're not jumping so high. So that's something to look forward to in the next video. And I want to thank everybody for stopping in and I hope you stop in for the next videos. Um, if you're going to be watching live today then talking maybe 20 minutes from now I'll be starting back up 20 to 30 minutes at the very most um, I'll start back up and I'll do th the second video and then after that we'll see how the day goes love you guys and catch me on discord we'll see you soon